Okay. Let's start on our backs. Um, your feet facing me, the soles of the feet together. And this is the opportunity here to prop up the uh, legs if you feel that you could help, that would be helpful because it is early in the morning. And then just come down, we're coming to supine body canossa with these nice wide space between the knees and lowering the back. And just bring the hands, hand of your choice, one to the lower belly and one to, this time to the sternum, give or take. Now, just, if you're going to have this, just make sure that elbows are nice and heavy. You may rest on the ground so you don't feel like you're holding yourself there. If you are, change the placement of your hands to something more comfortable for you and your body. Closing the eyes. Just take a little pause now to drop in. To make this space, this little pocket. yoke to really tune in and uh, allow everything else to sort of drop away and take this little pocket as an opportunity to yoke and to really, I don't know, foster some curiosity, some strength. Invite some sense of wholeness and gratitude. Let's round out those breaths a little bit. We can even count maybe up to five on a nice deep inhalation through the nose. Nice equal count exhalation. You can do it to the mouth. Closing the lips, bringing it in through the nostrils. Letting it out through the mouth. Let's close the lips, bring the tongue to the palate. We'll open the eyes and slowly start to close these legs up, bringing some ease to the groin and bringing the soles of the feet together. And we'll just take the hands from where they're resting now. And we'll do a little bit of wrist work with the backs of the arms resting on the mat, okay? So create these big palms, big starlight. I feel just joining. Big, big, big palms. And then squeeze with a very strong fist, both hands. Keep the upper chest nice and open. Do another couple of these big, open, spread the hands. And then a very strong grip, closing. Try to keep your wrists nice and, and stable. Don't flip them around. Do another big, 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 and close, close, close. And now start to move between these two shapes a little more rapidly. So don't scrimp on, on uh, space, but start to move it faster and faster and faster. Yep, faster. You'll, bring, you'll feel the heat in the hands and the arms and forearms. Just keep going with me. That's it faster as fast as you can go open and close and open and close good okay stop that take a moment to feel it tingling lovely bring the hands together above your chest interlace the fingers and just make kind of circles with the knuckles towards the ceiling you know bringing some ease in the wrists you've got eight carpal little wrist bones and then you've got the arm bones and then you got the carpal oh so these just bring some ease we work the hands a lot and I, I think we should give them some love and just do circles. Now unclasp, make a gentle fist. You can bring the knuckles together. Okay, looking at each other, you'll feel it resonate up the top of the arm or the forearm. Good. Now bring them, sort of roll them in towards you, feeling the tops of the wrists stretch. So kind of rowing them that way and then switch directions. This is wrist, we're not moving the whole arm. Yeah, that's it. 
and then stop and then open the hands to face each other with a softer palm so you feel a little bit of yeah softness in the pit of the palm and just take your thumb to your first finger tap that and then to the middle thumb to middle finger and then to the ring finger and the pinky finger back pinky finger ring finger middle finger pointer pointer middle ring pinky pinky ring point a middle pointer do that a couple more times going through the motion of tapping these satanama all the way just get some nice action through there just gently and then let go and we'll just kind of shake the hands out a little bit don't be too just like blah, blah, blah. good and then let's bring them down to the mat just feel a aliveness there i hope and we're going to stretch these legs out from us. Point the toes, bring the legs together and roll them in if you can. Take the arms above the head, feel the hollowness through the hip points and take this nice long stretch. Point it up, point it up. Ugh. And then let yourself flop down. Take your left leg to the left corner and right leg over crosses or bring it together, whatever. Lift up the upper back and bring it over. You're making that kind of banana half moon stretch supine on your back. That means take hold of the right wrist, give a little bit of leverage there and really open up that right side of the body. Just keeping mindful of allowing this right side of the body to keep sinking towards the floor. It will have a tendency to lift to make it sort of just feels better, but it's not. Try to keep it nice and heavy through that opening and then let go of the arm and the tension. Come back to center. Find that neutral space. Very important after asymmetrical postures, okay, to find your neutral space. Right leg over. Now do the same thing on the other side, lifting the back up. That's simply to get that sort of banana shape and then take hold of the wrist and find this sort of pressure that feels good and rich don't do too much again notice the chin and the neck here is in line with the spine just try to find that and it'll be the inhalation that offers this uh, and fosters the openness especially through the breathing muscles of the rib cage on the left side on this in this case and then Come back to center, uncross, take a moment here. Let the legs fall out as you stop holding the tension. Good. And then, so like come back, slide in the legs to constructive rest, heels come in towards your buttocks about hip distance apart. Hands are just resting on the lower belly for the moment. Notice the space beneath your lower back. It's gonna be different for all of us, but it will be there. The hands still on the belly, on one of your exhalations, squeeze that lower back into the mat. Okay, you'll feel the tailbone scoop up and away to look at the front of your space. I'm squeezing it down and still breathing here, learning how to press and yet still breathe through this. Okay, press that lower back in, press it in. And now do it with the breath work. On an inhale, slowly release that lower back. You'll feel the pelvis rock forward. Top, there's that pause at the... Top of the breath, exhale, slowly with the breath, guided by the breath, squeeze that lower back into the bottom of the breath. There's that pause, nothing left in the body. And slowly try not to snap, follow the cycle of the breath. Do a couple more of these lovely, rich pelvic tilts, getting to know that sense of how the spine is doing and shaped in the lower back. And one more, if you haven't already, squeeze and then when upon the release bring the knees up bring the shins parallel to the floor and bring the legs together lower backs away from the mat you can even test it by sliding the hands beneath your lower back reach for your thighs you probably won't get your hamstrings but bring your hands towards them and at some point again press your lower back in Bring your knees in towards your nose, elbows along by the hips and really stretch out the top of the neck. And there's quite a strong version of Apanasana and then let go a bit of the shape and begin your spinal rolls. Okay, it's gonna take a while. You won't get up in one for sure, for sure. Try to keep the legs nice and still and use that core pressing in to bring you back. I'm gonna do one more, <laughs> cause I like it. And we'll end up somewhat like this at the top of our mat with the legs together, elbows softened down by the side. Use this leverage of holding onto the leg to 
foster some opening here. This, this is kind of an easier place to sit, but we want to really counteract that and stay nice and tall. Lean back. You can even take your hands, sort of keep them there, but take them from your body so you can feel the shakiness as you just toy with taking the feet from the mat. You're going to suddenly feel, oh, well, like this. I'm exaggerating. Take the feet, hover, get the hands, try to find your stability from this area, this band. <clears throat> okay? You can bring your hands back to your body, to your hamstrings if you like. Just make sure the elbows are nice and clean. Pointing down, bring them now a little higher and try to maintain that height that we found. The tendency again will be to sink in your lower back and you'll feel your belly squeeze in towards your spine. Counteract that by very strongly spreading at the collarbones. Feeling the shoulder blades versus the scapula sort of roughly nicely alongside the spine. That's it. And then separate the legs in the air and bring them down to the mat. Once they're there, let go. You can find the mat with tented fingers. Okay. This might, we're all different shapes. So an arm length. So just, you know, play around with your body. You're going to come up. Okay. And find your belly on your uh, thighs. So you see my bottom isn't below my knees. I'm not in this kind of molossan squat. I'm more going to hit my head on the thing. And now just slide the hands, cradle the hips. And now elbows look the opposite direction again to let us be aware of opening the upper chest. Stay here, really getting a sense that it may not anatomically be correct, but we have a sense that the back of the head and the sacrum and the spine is nice and long and neutral, sort of like the base of an elevator, right? And then start to press the legs open, keep the length from hips to crown and find some sort of a half stand. You may not... Uh, don't over stretch the knees, okay? You give a very micro bend there and just lift the toes because we have a tendency to grip our world with the toes and then replace them down with some softness between the toes. Now let's address our midsection through the core. Just pull that up into the spine. Refine now by letting these arms drift past the hips, palms face in, and this will give us a sense of, of, of connection with the the shoulder caps and the sides of the neck and the ears. Feel spacious there, stay here, nice and long, and then take a big old squat. Plant the hands with a lot of space and step back to a high plank. Just take a moment to sort of pedal it out, soften it, you gotta get waking up the feet. We haven't done a lot of foot waking up yet. And then find your stillness. Get the heels well behind the toes. You'll feel it in the back of the knees and pull the belly really draw a strong navel behind that navel center up towards the spine. Feel that ball of light. Now bring the heels well forward of the toes. Lots of action there and place the knees down. Release the feet so the top of the feet look into the mat and take a moment to really spread your energy down your shin. It's gonna be challenging, it sounds super easy, but this is what the body wants to do. Pull up, okay, and pull the energy to the, to the front of your ankle. So we're gonna to try to counteract that by spreading the energy through the, the tarsal bones, the feet bones, right, long shins. You may have to bring your hands back a little bit and we find ourselves in the table. Push the ground away, expressing the breath, rounding the spine and squeezing the belly up. Inhaling, counteract that, lifting the crown, pull the hands in towards the knees and knees in towards the hands if you want some more traction. I'm sweating. And exhale. You can make these as soft or as strong and rich as you want. It's wonderful. I do them anytime. You don't need to prep for them. That's it. Find that neutral space and now arms are going to remain straight address the front of the body pull it in from your waistband snug up those organs and simply bring the shoulder blades around the spine so sink down towards those thumb tips and then press the ground away see if you can isolate the movement in the upper back of your body getting some nice movement for the shoulder blades with the fascial webbing around them, releasing. We tend to hold a lot, we get kind of hold a lot of worries in this area. We also 
tend to be really rigid and it's a, it's a tough area to get into, but just to looks awkward. Try not to move your chin in it. Okay. We're isolating it awkward in the upper back Good. and then come to stillness. Take the left leg straight out and plant the toe. So the left leg is straight out from the right knee. The hands are on the mat. Press into the pinky side of that left foot. Lift the hips, both of them, up. And turn the toes of your left foot under. So there's a lot going on. Start to drift your hips towards that left heel. You'll feel the arch. And then refine the pose while we're still up. Getting into the outside edge, really reaching down the outside of that left ankle. Feeling the response of that right foot and the under toes. And then let's see how it feels to soften the arms forward, start to stretch them. Stretch them, feel the waking up of the side body, and then we can lower the ears. Really work on dropping that left shoulder. It will want to lift. So just be, we're trying to even out that space across the chest, across the back, wake up the arches, the arch, feel the hips, and then pop the shoulders up. That will allow you to bring the hands back and get out of the depth, what we just made. Come off that heel or away from the heel and release the foot. Bring that right leg, left leg back in and just come sitting towards the heels again. Don't worry about blocking. If you can't make it there, you're just gonna be sort of more like this. You can always do this or all the way there and letting go of any holding, especially in the back of the neck. Okay, and then come up and start to practice it on the other side, taking the right leg out. This is the key long leg, rooted foot. Your first sign is, the adductors, so the inside of your right leg starting to give you some feedback. Lift those hips up. Turn the toes under of that left foot. Begin to sink the hip towards that left heel. That's it. Wait for it. See where, so on this side, interesting, my right side groin, so my right hip is giving me, saying, hello, sister. And then begin to walk the hands somewhere so that we can offer ourselves down, creating deliberate length around both side chains of our body. And then this is where the magic happens. Breathe in to the nooks and the crannies and the little dark spaces. Be aware of the dark spaces where you kind of don't want to go to. That's usually a nice uh, opportunity to actually go there. So that's the practice. Diving deeper inside the body, listening to the subtle ways it has to show us. Pop the shoulders up, bring the hands back, then they can support us as we bring that leg in. Release the top of the foot and come back down a little bit, some, something neutral where both hips are doing the same thing, okay? And if you suffer from sacroiliac weirdness, I'd suggest be very careful in your twists and very careful doing too many, if you're online, too many, uh, I've been seeing online a lot of people do too many asymmetrical postures in a row. It's very hard on the body. Let's stretch the arms out. We're going to go into downward dog. So you shift, find your way up and back, take up as much space as you want, feel good and full, and then refine the posture. Really focus on the first knuckle and the knuckles of your hands. So you don't feel like you're dumping into this very, very rich area, which is the heel of the hand. Okay, the carpal nerves go in here. Really feel the popping up of, the, of your palms. So you feel the legs taking the pose and the arms. Now, let's float a little bit forward in your plank. You may, I had to lengthen my pose a little bit. We're going to bring the knees down to the mat from plank. Lift your belly up. Don't let yourself sag and become disconnected from shoulders to hips. We're going to keep glue the hands down. Press them into the earth. Send the hips strongly back. This is not restful. Arms will be off the mat mostly. And then we're going to go up to plank, okay? Slowly fire up your thigh muscles, the big quadriceps in the front. Find your plank, refine it. 
So there were only two postures. There are two symmetrical postures. We're going to sister love them. So I'll bring them, go down. We're going to be at a different speed. So we're going to bring some heat, go up. Now you can breathe with your movement, or you can breathe while you start to go faster. You want to go faster, you're going to bring yourself back, get some heat, pop up and pop up. Be still very aware of the feedback you're receiving. Feel that all the joints nicely. We get that heat. This is a great one to bring. So if you're feeling kind of slothy, lethargic, you can hear it in my voice. I'm bringing my heat really full up just do a couple more of these you can go even faster you could go longer if you wanted more cardio and then up find your way into downward dog and we'll bring the left shin down to the mat and the right foot bring it to where the right hand was keep the toes of the left leg under and just let the hands come down by the side for the moment <clears throat> Bring the focus to this area in the front of the left hip. Kind of have this thing where you're leaning down, you feel it all spongy. You can even put your hand there to really read it that way. And then begin to lift up and feel like you're pulling the energy from that earth up past the hip, right to the front of your left shoulder, nice and tall. Okay, like it. So you feel the tailbone, your lower back is kind of moving towards the ground, it's lovely. Okay, this is a bit heavier We're from the ground up. Lift and hover. It's not a big lift. It's a strong lift. There's a big balance to it for, cool, for sure. But be okay with that, feel the work. This really makes you feel alive. Whew. Hands, drift them to the heart or the sternum, whatever's comfortable here, just bring them together accentuating this midline, okay? And begin to come into your arrow lunge, straightening the back leg, reaching from the ears to the crown and the crown up. And now take your right hand from that mudra and bring it to your right hip. And just ease that hip in, not out. And just see how does that, don't change anything else, just ease that hip in. And I mean ease, not a big movement. Bring the hands back, keep that nice alignment through the hips, press to that right heel. The hands are separating, they're going past the ears and the legs straighten. So this is a heart more challenging version than having the arms out to the side. Much longer. Yeah. Now, open the arms and bring them to that cactus shape. That's this kind of gold posty shape, whoopsie. So elbows are at shoulder height and the wrists are more or less above the elbows. Bend this right leg and practice this modified high lunge. Okay, really move that right ankle down, right heel down, pull it in. Really make everything sing. No solo, it's an orchestra. Okay, and then we're gonna just glide through these shapes, okay? Hands release down to the hips and the knee comes down. Move into your arrow lunge. Bring the arms up. Bring them down. Just one more time. Now, keep that nice space in the front of your left hip. Feel that space, maintain it when you come to the arrow lunge, fullness in your right. You're moving through arms up, down, oh, up, go post, good. And then all the way slowly, please don't dump, just see place or put your hands down, bringing that kneecap down. You feel it, release that foot for a moment. Put that left hand down on the mat. Right hand. Extend this left leg. And then find the mat with the right and let go of the head and the neck. Below that back up, really pop it up. Just breathe here for a moment. And then bring the knee down. Bring the right one back. Lift up. Find your symmetry, breathe here. 
If you need to take some micro movements, be my guest. Make them small. Try not to stay busy. You want to foster patience. Okay, knees come down, left knee comes forward. Allow this left waist to get heavy into the hip. Instead of this happening, drop it down. Arms come by the side. Bring your focus to the right side of the body and then lift. Again, small lift. Be okay with that shaking, that power. Watch the jaw here and the chewing surfaces of the teeth. Just keep them apart, the tongue resting gently at the palate, okay? Just visit that area. I had the hands here, but we're gonna keep them, okay? They were in the mudra at the beginning, but I'm, wow, bring them back for this round. I just want you to take the left hand, do what we did on the other side, which is ease it. It may already be there, but if it isn't, start to learn body reading by just easing it in towards the groin. Press into that heel. Straighten the leg, send the hands past the ears, keeping ourselves front and center, the short end of the mat. Notice again how the neck feels. Is the chin craning? Try to keep it soft. The eyelids soft. Balance, balance, balance. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Arms open like those goal posts, and the left leg will bend. You should still be able to see the inside of your left foot, right? Breathe. Feel the sides body. Feel the waist. It's happening in the chest, the lungs, the heart. Okay, we'll go through this, breathing our way lower down. Come to that arrow lunge, shoulder caps nice and wide from the neck. Press it up. And down. All the way down, drift it down. Feel like you're moving through molasses, through no hard edges. It's challenging, press through the heel. Arms up, straight legs, neutral hips, which means they're both even. And then and still the hips are trying to stay even. Arms down, slowly drift down. All the way. When you feel that knee, release. Bring that hand down, lift that knee. Let go of the crown of the head down. Knee down, left leg back, downward dog. And we'll step up to the hands with the feet apart, the knees giving a slight bend, a real functional release of the shoulder cap. So they will kind of pull in towards the neck. It should feel quite interesting sort of a flaring at the ribs, okay? And then nice, follow it with a nice roll up, really honoring the inhalations. Reconnecting with the earth on the exhal exhalation. Finally, feeling the curve of the neck, the back of the head through the crown. Let's keep the feet down. Move around the edges, the heels, feel the toes. You might see like I'm just kind of feeling why my I can't say enough. You know, doing dishes any times in the day, brushing your teeth. Bring your awareness. We don't aren't aware of our foundation. And it's cool. Just be there. Just feel these amazing things we call our feet energetically reaching downwards and drawing that energy back upwards. Okay, we're gonna keep with building a little bit of heat here. And then we'll do some open hip. So, so at the top of our mat, we've done it before. I'm just gonna add a little bit more 
balance and stamina into this sequence. So it's a true balance, stamina. So I won't marry you. Right leg, this is standing like left leg will lift. I've done it before. You can add the arms anytime you like, or just simply keep them here because it's going to be, it's pretty intense. Well, maybe it won't be for you. I find it intense. We're going to go slowly and controlled. Bend the standing leg, the right one. Stretch and tap the ground with your left heel. Okay, we're going slowly. Straighten. And I'm breathing through. Don't we're not kind of sink it with the breath. You're breathing hoy. This time, come down. Put your heel down and your foot. Lift your left heel up, right heel up, and drop down. Like you've taken this awkward, rather step. Okay. Shift back the right heel, and replace. That's where you can add your hands. Okay. Bend the standing leg. Point. The left leg out to the side. Okay. Feel the hips working. Okay. Bring that in. We've done that before. So sure, you can add the arms or just keep the hands, like I said. Keep your drishti. I'm looking at you. Okay. Down. Step that back out. Find your pointed foot. Find the mat and take a squat. So here's the power side. Okay. Keep breathing. Squat, be comfortable in the knees, mind you. Nice to all. Okay. Shifting the weight to the standing leg, get back up, control it. It's a lot of control here. Arms up or not. Okay. Go back. You can go into full flight if that's warrior three you like, or just tap your big toe on the mat behind you. I'll have to switch. Okay. You can go anything or like this is wonderful. Slowly move through. Stand, good, go back, plant the foot, the toe where, right? And drop down, don't bring your knee all the way down. Don't bring it all the way down. Here, okay. This is where if you were using hands, you're gonna power it up with that left leg and your core, reach it all the way up. Find a full right foot and then bring it down. to the other side. Sing, sing, okay. Left leg, standing leg. Just this action engages the psoas, so the deepest muscle, core muscles, actually iliopsoas. We're making that. Okay, bend, tap the heel, keep the hips nice and square. Slow, control. Standing leg, we're not throwing ourselves through this. Add the arms if you want. Take the arms down, bend, put the heel down, find the full foot, lift the back heel up and drop the knee towards the ground, but not all the way. You have power up, feel the hamstrings light up, up, up. Down to the side with this nice long inside to the big toe, your right foot. Slide it back. You can touch the ground or not, all sorts of things. You can be creative. Okay, so here's the heavy part. So find it. Just like that practice, the whole foot finds the mat, toes in line, looking to the side, and take your squat. So you can go low, low, low. You can learn to take it less wide or wider, so many things. Okay, but it's full footed and the knees are comfortable. Rise back up, come to the ball. Plug the belly in to support the lift of this leg. And go to warrior three or simply tap the foot. Okay, whatever. Look. Bring it through. So we have opening and closing the front of the hip. Fantastic, rich work. Balance, strength, heat. Find the mat, keep the heel. Lower down, but not all the way. Last one. So here's the power in the left hip, glute and leg all the way up. Yes, and right down. Let the weight distribution even out. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're going to work if you'd like to have a proc at the top we're going to be doing an open balance to complement that kind of close otherwise do what i'm going to do you don't have to go so deeply stepping back with the left leg quite long warrior length okay let's soften that back hip so that the back knee is nice and safe. We're not overdoing, you don't feel pinchy around your sacrum and begin to bend that right leg. Just play around with your foundation. I'm lengthening as I'm easing into the space that I wanna practice in. Arms, bring them up, keep the gaze over the spine for the moment. Visualize the energy running like up, out the arms with nice broad shoulders. Lift that right heel, sink your posture a little bit, keep the gaze over the spine. It's not traditional, usually it would be over the front. I don't want to over torque the neck. Yeah. Reach down the pinky side of your back leg. Yes. Slowly find the mat with that right heel. Bring the hands down to the hips. Come to the ball of that back leg and ball of the foot and bring it in. So now see I'm duck footed. Lift the toes of the back foot and bring them in. Do that until, so that's, you can do that more quickly and subtly, I'm just explaining it. Until you feel you've closed your posture up. If you don't need to do it, you don't do it. I'm gonna hit my hand into flight. Okay, finding your prop. The arms, if you're gonna add the arms, please try to be easy on the shoulders, okay? Really feel a sense of connection with the lungs and the heart versus the arms. Good. When you're ready to come out, remember, bend the front leg. It just brings the ground closer. Um, pivot and close up. Take a moment at the top. We'll prepare for the other side. Stepping back nice and long. Really grounding your practice deep, deep into the earth's core, okay? Don't worry about this part until we create the healthy foundation. I'm again, adjusting the length. Ease in that back, arms up. Feel them really reaching out of this area, nice and wide. Keep the gaze over the spine. Find the space in this posture, it's huge in it, very strong. Lift the heel of that front leg and drop the pose potentially, offering a little more space between here to the first energy center. Yeah. Okay. So feel the weight of the heel come down, come up to that heel, uh, toe, heel toe, moving into your balance on the left side. Yeah. Really having a sense of the liver, your right lung, right? Spiraling towards the ceiling. Remember to bend the front leg as you exit, pivot, step through. Okay. Standing at the top of the mat, I'm gonna come bring the feet together. Come into Utkatasana, so with the legs together and the hands here for the moment. So again, find the foundation. This posture is an absolute gold star posture. If you're having sacroiliac or sacrum and the issues around here. Because why? Because it's a neutral shape and we're bringing strength as I'm sinking thinking now we're going to bring balance into it keep the hands here for the moment and lift the heels and drop a little bit 
Now, I invite you to find the mat again and come higher if you need to, because this is a lot to ask, because to bring the right arm under the left, bind them, lift the elbows up, the elbows up and the wrists away. Keep balancing. Otherwise, bring your feet to the mat and go slightly higher. Be very gentle, unvining, bring them down. Go the opposite way, vining. And if it doesn't vine, put the backs of the hands together, keep balancing, moving the opening. So the balance of the feet, the heat to the opening of the upper back. Undo. Keep the heels lifted. Rise up, 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 up. Roll those thighs in if you can. Find the mat with the feet. Lift up with the chest. Bring the hands together if that's okay for your shoulders and just simply draw that line down as we fold over the standing legs, finding the belly to the thigh, softness in the neck and heavy in the head. Dangle here for a moment. And then come a little higher. You can take hold of the opposite elbow with the opposite hand if you wanna bring some rich work into the side body, you just kind of float over the outside of each foot. Should feel kind of, kind of really should feel nice. Remember not straight legs because the hamstrings don't need to do all that work. Yeah, and then let go, find the mat and gently find your way down, release the feet into child's pose of some short, some shape. So forehead on the backs of the hands, head on a block, hands by the feet. Close the eyes. Close the eyes. So, so we lift up a little bit higher so we can move so the hands will support us. Come up and take the knees out. Not so wide that the hips respond by tightening up and pushing you out, but wide enough. Big toes stay together for the moment. Come back down to the shape that you chose. A wide leg child's pose. Take a moment as we're here to really draw the pelvis, like think of the center of the glutes and lift your hip, tilt your pelvis down, push your hips back. You have to find richness here. Yet stay connected with the front of your spine. Okay, press away. Come up a little bit and we're gonna come into frog. This may, I just need you to know if you feel any sensitivity on the insides of the knees, stop and come back to this shape. What we do is we turn to take those shins parallel, perpendicular to the thighs, okay? And you can open your knees or just stay here exploring this shape, okay? And you're easing the hips towards the space between your heels or coming down. Explore, just be curious, creative. I mean, I'm not on my mat anymore, so I can feel the, my wood floor beneath the sides of my knees. It's not super pleasant, but I'm not in pain, but I can still stay connected to the depth and the richness. It's a big ask, okay? You don't have to go super deep. Sometimes people wanna go, I'm not going to go super, it just feels good. And what's nice again, it's a symmetrical hip opener. Okay, this is the kind, you look kind of awkward coming out of it. Remember, take it easy one at a time, closing it up. Bring them right in. And come to kneeling for a moment. Your body in, closed. Let's stand on the shins for a moment. Sweep the hands to the back of your hips. So come somewhat like this. 
and then really identify the space up here. So engage that so you can bring the elbows towards each other, fostering a lot of space by the collarbones, clavicles, okay, keeping the hips. So you can imagine practicing perhaps against a wall. We want to try to keep this area down nice and still against the wall. So imagine, put your imaginary wall, keep that gentle pressure forward for the hips, and then begin to lift the chest up, gentle with the neck. So keep the gaze, the eyelids soft. Don't stare at the ceiling, you're not. Send the breath up to the collarbones, the fifth chakra, it's a modified camel. Please don't throw the head back and strain your neck. And when you want to exit, really engage your core. So pull that in, it will help you rise back up. It'll feel good. That's it. And then reach forward, find your downward dog. If you'd like, you can do a little round of vinyasa. I will do it. You can come down to the mats or you can simply step through to the top of the mat to sit. Okay, you're sitting. This is where feel free to prop. Propping means putting your seat, your hips, your bottom, your bum on a block. I wanted to just before we continue with our floor practice, we're gonna do a seated twist. Why I'm bringing it up is I like, we are gonna use our hands. Remember, so we're gonna put, I'll mirror you, so I'll put our left hand over to the right thigh. Just drift it there. Keep sort of gazing for it though. Let the right hand drift back. It's probably gonna to need to be tented to find the mat and keep it a softness there, try not to torque. Now, before we go, we're gonna let the left hip slide a little bit forward, stay tall. Now, oh, I'll go the other way. Now, I'd like, instead of torquing us, can we identify with our organs? So on this side, it's gonna be, let's think of, the lung, the left lung and the heart is more on that side. Feel that coming to the front of your chest. Okay, your stomach more on that side, coming to the front of your chest. Your right lung moving to the back of you and your liver, which is kind of below on the right side, moving to the back of you, moving up and back. The ascending colon, so on the right side, feel that's kind of moving to the back of you. The descending colon, is moving to the front of your body. Feel them. Feel we're working like from these interior bands versus throwing ourselves with our strength of our back and our arms into some crazy twist and see if the twist feels richer. More. Oh. So the hands are there for a little bit of leverage, but. The idea is to really activate the sense of moving from the core, this rich, bringing our organs into the practice. And as you may, as you may see, I didn't bring the chin over, but of course you can do a little more for the neck if you like. And then when exiting, be very aware of how it feels those organs floating back. Everything finds its space. Perhaps it has a little more space around it and go to the other side. It's worth taking time. Just so here, well, the opposite will happen, okay? You want to allow the right hip to slide forward, get tall, find your arm placement. Start to identify maybe with your right lung, bring it towards the front of your chest. The left lung and heart are moving to the back towards your scapula. The liver on the right side is moving forward. Your stomach and spleen are moving back. Your ascending colon on the right, right on the inside of your hip crest, sort of, is going where? Harvard. The descending on the left side is going back. 
and then massage them. Really identify with these space. Doesn't matter if you know what they look like, they're part of you. And that's where the twist comes from. Feel them receiving that. And then the spine, the breathing, the discs, and then remember to gently, gently undo. And they'll find their natural place. Nice. Okay. Undo the crossed legs, stretch them out, flexing at the ankle so the toes look to the ceiling. We'll just lift ourselves up, lean a little bit forward, and find this. So here we are. I'm going to invite the legs. They won't want to. Okay. The legs, if they were going to fall, they will fall open, not inwards. Okay. Try it. Inwards feels far better than. You can gently you know, find that external rotation. Then we're going to reach down. We're not going to go far because we're going to try to keep a nice long trunk. So it's going to be, I, I know some people go to the floor, but I don't, it's not what we're working on here. We're working on staying nice and tall, learning how legs are opening and bodies folding in. There's a lot of work to the hips and the groins. Again, you might identify those spaces we just were with as we twisted and how they have their perfect spaces to rest in as we lean over. Wide leg seated forward fold. And then you're not going to notice, but I'm doing micro movements of maybe, maybe finding a little more richness. As in everything, when we begin to back away incrementally and gently, so it's almost that I won't even see you back in a way, like I almost did that too. And the hands beneath the hamstrings, and we just one at a time, bring the legs in. Find the feet at distance apart and we'll find the hands on the mat, fingers looking for it. Now, if you're struggling with your wrists a little bit, maybe explore taking the hands out a, a little. Find that very strong dome of the palm and begin to lift up. Reverse table. Okay, I'm gonna put my hands back into there. Reach the body up, take up space laterally. So feel those little energy arrows going side, away from us, away from our chest, our waist, our hips, our knees, our ankles, our shoulders. That's it. And then we'll lower our buttocks in between the two. Open the feet now together, or the soles of the feet together. Not body canals, not super close. So we're going to leave them. Um, but first bring the forearms down, rest them on the legs. That may be enough pressure. Let's develop a little bit of softness here in the front of the body. Okay, definite. And then begin from the lower back, fanning it up, and we're going to slowly Close over that space, offering the forehead towards the feet, possibly. You're always, you can always put a prop there, blanket, bolster, to find a purchase. Slowly reset hands, come to the knees, close them up. Oh, she knows, sorry, don't close them up. Keep them, as, oops, because I had to move. Keep them as they are when you come up and we're gonna work into our back. So if you need something for your finishing posture, I hope it's close by. Come down, forearms on the mat. 
they identify with the or, all the organs in the front of the body. Let everything sink towards the back body, towards your kidneys. Let everything sink into the ground as we start to lower ourselves down all the way. Let the lower back spring up to where it's comfortable. If it's okay for you, place the hands on the inside of your hip crests. Just cradling this area. Press into the back of the head and lift your body off and then put it back down as you feel better. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. There's nothing technical or you can keep a soft gaze, Christy, until we move into your absolute final finishing posture. But we focus on the insides of the legs as we draw them together, find the mat with the feet. I slide the legs in. Notice the lower back still away from the mat. Okay. Keep the lower back from the mat. Don't let it sink and just bring the legs up without a prop beneath the hips. You'll have to have a bend at the knees to find that lovely, it's gonna be different for all of us, but you wanna have this lovely rich sense of the thigh bones, the femurs themselves, sort of releasing into the hips. So all the pulling and holding can soften. Gravity is our friend. Mm -hmm. And then lower the cat, the shins, so the calves and the hamstrings kind of touch. Bring the legs gently together. Drift your hands, coming into a really, really soft apanasana. You can take your time, let kind of grow yourself into it. But at some point, you probably come into a little tuck. Refine the shape as much as you want. But I would suggest keeping it nice and soft. So don't bring energy to the ankles. Don't do a strong grip or anything. Maybe rock. And then come back and find your way into Shavasana taking the legs not super wide. Remember, they're just wide enough that there's softness to the groins. The legs fall out as they did when we were doing that seated forward fold. And then the arms come out just far enough that you feel the release in the underarms, the eyes close if they haven't already, and the body just drops. into the earth, into the ground. Um, Be still as we breathe, soundless and without any effort, soaking up. Gradually begin to allow the inhalations to sort of refill the edges of the physical body, 
It's expanding into the energy bodies. And some movement to the fingers and toes or a little stretch. And then just come to your side. That's sitting. I can feel ready to move. Here. Take a moment to lift the corners of the mouth. Sit for a moment with your breath. Acknowledge in the close of this practice. Any gratitude, thank you. Thank you for joining.